of Steering Policy Committee, and she's the ranking member on Labor, Health, Human Services, and the Education Appropriations Subcommittee, where she oversees our nation's investments in education, health, employment. She also serves on the subcommittee responsible for FDA, agriculture, and where she oversees the food and drug safety. Good morning, and thank you very, very much, Paul. It's such a pleasure to be with all of you today. Thank you uh, for coming out and spending some time with us. A thank you to Judy Nagin for organizing and helping with this event, and Rabbi Brockman, um, as always, thank you very, very much. Uh, I always enjoy coming to Congregation of Israel uh, at the end of the campaign season uh, to be amongst friends, but also to be amongst citizens who take the issues that we face today and always very seriously. And I want to say a thank you uh, to Mr. Winsley uh, for joining this discussion here uh, today. Our state and our nation are at a critical moment. We face a choice in this election. Are we going to move together to strengthen the middle class, or are we going to grant more tax breaks to the wealthiest Americans while leaving working families, seniors, uh, and the most vulnerable in our society to fend for themselves? I believe that what we need to do is to invest in rebuilding the middle class. With millions of Americans who are out of work, jobs, economic growth, those must be our highest priorities. In the Congress, I work to ensure that our budget makes the investments that we need to grow as an economy and as a nation. Educating our children, making college affordable, providing health care services, advancing scientific research. Throughout my career, I have fought for investments in infrastructure, transportation projects, which create jobs that cannot be outsourced, as well as research funding that supports cutting-edge biomedical research, and those create jobs in this district. To grow out of the worst economic recession since the Great Depression, I have pushed a jobs agenda which addresses the need for jobs now, but also lays the long-term foundation for economic growth. Rebuilding America, protecting working families, strengthening small businesses and the middle class. That includes a national infrastructure bank that can leverage billions of dollars of private capital toward public investment. It includes to create jobs by modernizing, repairing K-12 schools and our community colleges all over the country. It includes efforts to spur manufacturing and innovation so that we can transition to a cleaner, more energy efficient economy so that Connecticut can continue to lead the nation as a place where we build things, not just buy things that are made overseas. I believe that we need to maintain tax cuts for middle class families, for small businesses, while restoring fairness to our tax code. My opponent, the Republican Party, offer another path. They have endorsed a budget that dramatically slashes K-12 education, college aid, medical research, food for seniors, nutrition programs, and other initiatives. It ends the guarantee to Medicare that has been the cornerstone of our retirement system for nearly 50 years. It weakens the child tax credit, pushing the families of 2 million more children into poverty. And it would repeal the transformative and long overdue health insurance reforms that we worked so hard to pass in 2010. It does all of this to fund $4.6 trillion in new tax cuts <coughs> to benefit the wealthiest Americans. According to one study, 62% of the cuts in this budget fall on the lowest income Americans. That's wrong to me, and I have fought this budget, and I will continue to do so. And even as we struggle with an economic crisis at home, we still face an uncertain world, especially in the Middle East, Libya, Syria, Egypt, and of course, in Iran. I've always proudly stood by Israel. This is not just the result of my work, but also of my many personal ties and experience. As an appropriator, I have always and will continue to support security assistance that allows Israel to maintain its qualitative edge over its
its regional adversaries. In July, President Obama signed the United States-Israel Enhanced Security Cooperation Act, which I was proud to co-sponsor. It deepens our defense and security cooperation with Israel. I also supported President Obama's request totaling $275 million to fund the deployment of the Iron Dome rocket defense system. This will further help defend Israeli communities against rocket attacks from Gaza at an increasing rate. Ensuring Israel's security is what, uh, in order to get back on the path uh, to a two-state solution, which in my view is the only hope for real security uh, for Israel. We need to uh, look at what is the most pressing challenge, of course, and that is Iran. I have supported the strongest sanctions against Iran ever passed by the Congress, and they are having an effect. We need to keep up that pressure. And Iran with nuclear weapons directed at Israel is an unthinkable outcome. We also need to bring the war in Afghanistan to a close. Our soldiers' courage has been an inspiration to all of us. We look forward to their safe return. And when they do, we must honor our commitments to them, which is why I have continued to secure funding for the improvements to the West Haven VA, work to enhance our commitment to mental health care and other initiatives that help our troops, our returning veterans, to get an education, employment, and to really get the transition back to civilian life. So standing up for the middle class, working families, small businesses in our district is part of the job that I love. I do not take the responsibility blindly. I never have. And I am re-energized for the challenges